What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, real quick, we've got some big news. We finally made it. We got the OnlyFans page up at behind the stream. So if you guys want to go and check that out, it's $20 a month. We're going to be posting content that we're definitely not going to be posting anywhere else. So hope to see you there. This video is highly requested. I get this request so many times, you know, over the past few weeks, over the past few months. A lot of people want to hear a sort of a synopsis, right? Me reminiscing on the vegan drama, talking about 2016, 2017, just sort of telling you guys the story and how it all went down. In case you don't know, back in 2016 and into 2017, vegan drama was like a thing, okay? If you follow me from the Carterverse days, it was kind of like its own little universe like that. And basically, I guess I could, you know, some people would credit me as uh, the creator of the vegan drama. I think the vegan drama existed long before I ever, you know, hit YouTube. It was just that I sort of uh, formatted the content into a, a consistent theme. And so I uh, developed this channel called The Vegan Cheetah, or I, I guess the channel is called Vegan Cheetah. And I had also created this channel, Vegan Cheetah Vlogs, that's the app for this channel, when I was still in a halfway house after, um, you know, I was in the middle of completing a, 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 a five-year felony probation requirement, but I actually got off the probation early. I actually got off in like 2016, September of 2016, which meant that I was able to travel, I was able to move to LA later on, um, I'm not going to talk about so so much about the LA stuff. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about how Vegan Cheetah blew up on YouTube. So, as I said, I started making uh, these vegan videos, right? They were kind of generic, you know, workout videos, vegan food videos, and I was doing all this from my halfway house. And then I also started this channel, um, the Vegan Cheetah Vlogs channel, and I was basically vlogging. Actually, to be honest with you guys, I think I saw like FouseyTube vlogs back then, and I was like, hey, I think I wanna, I think I wanna be a vlogger too. So I started vlogging uh, my halfway house, you know, experience. Some of those videos I've actually released recently. If you go way back down in the feed on this channel, uh, you'll you'll be able to watch those videos from 2015, 2016. Um, so, and I will release more of those vlogs. Um, I remember when I was in the halfway house, I was there for like, I don't know, maybe eight months, nine months, and then I moved back in with my parents. I'm like 26 years old. And then uh, May of that year, my mother passed away. And I really think my mom passing away and passing away so unexpectedly and just how devastating it was to me uh, emotionally. I kind of like went crazy, you know, I just sort of went crazy and I, I wasn't, I was clean. I wasn't using drugs and that was another great thing too. My mom got to see me clean, you know, she, she passed away and I was, uh, I was living right, at least living right halfway, um, doing some of the right things. But when she passed away, I, I sort of just went crazy. I went nuts and I uh, created this vegan cheetah persona and formatted, you know, all this vegan drama stuff uh, into a particular video style and it just really caught on. I mean, when it was all said and done, the Vegan Cheetah channel, which I ended up deleting um, back in 2018, I deleted the whole freaking channel. I have no access to it. Uh, that channel blew up. I, hit, I think it hit about 60,000 subscribers at one point in time. I remember the first really big video that I had, it was entitled something like Freely and Durian Ryder break up. And if you don't know who Freely the Banana Girl is and Durian Ryder, they're kind of like vegan celebrities. Uh, they're some of the biggest vegan YouTubers known to mankind. And uh, you, you've probably been living under a rock if you at least haven't heard of those names. But they were like this big influential vegan couple. You know, they've been uploading since 2012 or something like that, maybe even earlier. They had all these different videos. Um, but they were like a, a, a vegan power couple. And they always held this uh, fruit festival in Thailand. It was called the Thai Vegan Fruit Festival. I think they did it for like three or four years in a row. I was the first one, the very first one on YouTube to recognize that these two had broken up, that they were breaking up, that this relationship was over. 
And uh, the way I was able to tell was just by watching their content from the fruit festival. You know, I could see the distance. I was like analyzing all this footage and I made all this uh, content out of it. But I, I made this one video called Freely and During Rider Break Up. And I had a picture of Freely on the left, During Rider on the right, and there was like a broken heart emoji. And I had like the, the yellow letters, you know, sort of the tabloid looking letters with the, the black background. I mean, it was really cool. It was a, a very unique thing that I, sort of stumbled upon, you know, the, this format, the vegan drama. And that video just like exploded. I mean, it exploded my channel, it exploded my reach on social media. I was getting literally like thousands of new subscribers every single day from it, you know, over on the other channel. And I think that video hit like 325,000 views, which was like just amazing. And it was just unheard of for this little niche that you know, I and we had created. I wasn't the only one that was making these videos. Like by the time I started, you know, really hopping on the vegan drama stuff, um, there were other channels. A anybody remember Joe Vegan? Or um, there was also uh, uh, this girl named Lauren. Um, I can't remember her, her vegan handle, but Joe Vegan, uh, you know, started making like these, these uh, videos as well. And uh, there was, you know, of course, Dr. Evil, right? Some of you know, Eisel Mazar, he was in on the vegan drama, constantly calling other vegans out. You know, and this is, this is what was so, I, I guess, cool about the scene was that it was, you know, I was basically highlighting vegans versus other vegans, right? Because there was a lot of drama between the vegans and the non-vegans, the vegans and the carnivores, uh, the vegans and, and, you know, some of these bodybuilders. Uh, you know, you had vegan gains out there calling out non-vegans left and right. But like my channel was the first channel that really featured vegan vegans versus vegans. You know, and I would also call out vegans, but I, I wasn't doing it from a scientific standpoint, obviously. I was, uh, you know, it was purely for entertainment. I was basically making fun of these people. You know, whether it was Raw Vana, High Carb Hannah, Raw Alignment, a lot of these names too. They ended up um, either giving up the vegan diet two, three, four years later, or going full blown carnivore, like I think uh, Raw Alignment did for some time. But I would just make fun of these people, you know. There was also this uh, very strange phenomenon where the men in the vegan community, you know, you had like Durian Rider and um, that vegan couple, uh, I forget the, the guy's name in that, um, but also Derek, High Carb Hannah's husband. Uh, they, all these vegans, these high profile vegans, they, they were getting vasectomies. They were literally like, you know, castrating themselves essentially. And the whole argument there was that, well, you know, the earth is populated and we're vegans. We care about the, the environment. So we don't want to have any kids. We don't want to have any of our own kids and contribute to the environmental damage that, you know, just, you know, all, all this anti-natalism uh, sentiment. And, and you had vegans like Unnatural Vegan who does have kids. You know, she was uh, calling out some of these other vegans for, uh, you know, being anti-natalist. And um, so there was just a lot to talk about. I mean, every single day. I mean, that scene back then was huge. It was being featured in Wired Magazine and, uh, um, you know, the BBC was writing about the vegan drama. You had um, uh, BuzzFeed, just all kinds of, uh, Jezebel, I think, did a big article on the vegan drama. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. One of the wildest... Uh, times of my life and I ended up flying out to LA uh, kind of doing the, the vegan circuit out there filming a lot of videos a happy healthy vegan invited me onto their channel a couple of times I had actually done some videos roasting them I can remember back in the halfway house days I remember uh, Ryan had actually blocked me uh, for I, I, I don't remember for what I, I probably because I was making fun of one of Angie's videos or something I remember every time I would like make fun of Angie or something, Ryan would get really, really heated and he'd do a video, you know, solo, kind of uh, in defense of his, his girl, which is commendable. Um, they actually hate me now because, uh, well, it came out that Vegan Gains, their protege, uh, one of the, the vegan YouTubers that they had uh, really helped to promote, uh, it, ended up, it ended up that Vegan Gains had bought a dog from a breeder, him and Jasmine, bought a, uh, a dog from a breeder. That was more like 2017 LA drama. 
when I moved to LA too, I want to mention this, Vegan Gains came at me hard. Like once I had moved to LA, uh, Vegan Gains just, he came at me so hard. He was trying to destroy me, destroy my channel. And then I got the lead from somebody that, you know, they had bought a dog from a breeder, which was, that's like a huge no-no in the vegan community. That's a huge, like, don't do amongst the vegans, or, or at least it was back then. It was very controversial. I'm not sure how many people care now, but um, yeah, I, I was able to get a few punches in there. I made like a small video series about that. Um, then you had Bite Size Vegan as well. Uh, you know, I made a bunch of videos making fun of her and uh, Vegan Gains did not like that. You know, there was like this, this little click too, you know. Uh, some of the vegans, they were like super hardcore. Uh, they, they, were, they were just all in this little click and you know they would kind of I made videos kind of criticizing this because they would really look down on people that weren't a hundred percent vegan or that were you know eating vegan but weren't wearing you know vegan clothes and um, you know that, that, that were just they, they weren't militant about it right there was sort of this militant click and then this little group or emerging group of youtubers that weren't as militant and I was one of them you know. I also came up with a, the vegan umbrella theory, right, where, you know, we could include, I was trolling, obviously. Most people don't even get this, but, uh, you know, the, the content that I put out there, I mean, like 95% of the time, I'm just trolling, you know. I'm just having a good time and making video content. It, it's funny, too, because back then, people didn't get that. Like, there were so many vegans that were just so angry at me about, you know, what the, the kind of content I was creating. And it was just a joke. It was purely for entertainment. It was it was sort of like a I don't know like a, a late night you know trashy sitcom or a late night reality show or something. Uh, it was kind of like maybe a vegan Jerry Springer. A lot of people like compared it to that. Uh, but I mean, like I said, I just went crazy with it. After my mother died, I was just emotionally devastated. I wasn't using drugs, and I think I got addicted to like the social media um, notoriety. Uh, don't even tell me about the ad revenue, right? This was long before, well, this was like a year before Adpocalypse, if you guys remember, that PewDiePie had sparked off. Uh, this was right after the Trump election in 2017, and the advertisers just all fled from YouTube, and they started demonetizing everybody. I mean, it was crazy. But uh, before that, you know, in the summer of 2016, I mean, I, I was... It, it was ridiculous how much money I was making in ad revenue off of these uh, vegan videos. You know, and I, I was just having a good time, and, and uh, I pissed a lot of people off. There's a lot of people that are ex still extremely angry with me. Uh, you can see it in the comments. You know, you, you can see um, all the uh, uh, the hate on a daily basis, which you know I, I always kind of laugh at the hate comments. So keep them coming, boys. Keep them coming, and girls. <laughs> keep them coming. Uh, somebody the other day said I look like a 5'5 version of Patrick Swayze or something. I, they were, And they called me a gnome. Um, but I'm actually 5'10. 5'11 with the hair. Especially when I straighten it. Um, I should have straightened my hair for this video. I should, you know. I, I'm rocking my grease shirt. So at least we put on, we put on some nice clothes. Uh, and I was making these videos out of my childhood home. Like the den area of my childhood home. If you guys remember that cozy little room. Uh, I had my computer set up. I think I was editing editing these videos with uh, Windows Movie Maker because this was before I got a Mac. I actually was able to buy a Mac uh, with some of the, the ad revenue that I'd, I had made. Um, so I upgraded to the Mac and obviously those videos got a little bit more highly produced. Uh, at one point in time I was spending like, I don't know, four hours a day like producing these videos, making them extra catchy, throwing in tons of jump clips, which I think is totally unnecessary now. I would never spend that much time editing. I actually don't edit any of my videos these days. Uh, I just don't have time. I, I got a busy life, you know, a lot going on. I ain't got time to edit videos. But back then, uh, I was, you know, I was editing these videos and uh, I, I guess at the time it was sort of worth it. I was also vlogging. So let, let's talk a little bit about this channel before I kind of wrap things up. I mean, there's so many things I could say about it, but I'm just sort of reminiscing on, on the, uh, the time period because so many of you requested this video. But uh, I had this channel started by like early 2016. Maybe, yeah, I think it was early 2016. This channel had started and uh, 
I was vlogging from the halfway house, but when I got out of the halfway house, I was vlogging at home. And there's a few vlogs, probably somewhere in there, uh, where you, you know my mother's in there, my father's in there, but it was mainly me and my brother, just you know BSing, right? And we would ride around, we'd go to the gym, I'd troll him at the gym. Uh, but some of these vlogs, man, I mean, because the other channel had gotten so huge, my vlog channel was starting to blow up. I went from like 1,000 subscribers, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Uh, right now the channel has like 12,000 subscribers. Uh, a lot of them came from the, that period of time. This channel I think had 15,000 subscribers at one time, but then I got canceled and thousands of people unsubscribed in mass. I've been canceled so many times, guys, on social media. It's ridiculous. One of the uh, little things I used to do in the one of the tropes in uh, the, the the vlog channel was I would take a huge hit of my vape and I'd be like big fat clouds first thing in the morning and still to this day a lot of people you know they comment that every time I, I vape um, but some of these vlogs that like if I look back on them I'll re-release some of them um, as time goes on but because I, I had you know basically unlisted all of them, privated all of them when I was trying to revamp this channel and do something different. But uh, I, I do want to re-release those. Some of them have 50K, 70K views. There's a lot of them with like 15K. So I mean, the vlogs were like really blowing up. And a lot of people on social media, I remember Joe, uh, um, Joe Best. If you guys remember Joe Best, that was some really good content. Every time he would film a, a vegan drama video, he hasn't done that in years. I don't even know if he's still vegan. I, I think he wasn't vegan for a while and then went back to it recently. But Joe Best was basically telling me at the time, you know, look how many views you're getting on your vlogs. You know, why don't you try and just move in, a, in, in that direction? And, uh, you know, looking back on it, maybe I should have focused more on vlogging or should have focused a little bit more on, uh, you know, some, some uh, less controversial content. Uh, in LA, I did vlog a lot, and I was vlogging with my girlfriend at the time, um, the, uh, the LA meth witch, we will call her. There's still a, a, a YouTube commenter to this day that has the handle, the LA meth witch. So, I mean, just so many funny little you know, jokes, inside jokes, and uh, quirks and tropes came out from the, the content that I was making. But uh, yeah, Joe Best was one of the, the people telling me, you know, when my drama videos were blowing up, he was like, well, why don't you do more vlogs? Why don't you really focus on the vlogs? Uh, just because the, you know, the drama did get really toxic at times, you know. I think that's one reason I, I stepped away from it, uh, stepped away from kind of making call out videos and stuff like that because, you know, you piss off the wrong person, you can get hundreds of negative comments. And you know, eventually I ended up getting demonetized, not for drama videos, but because of the, uh, the thing that happened in 2020 that I won't mention right now, um, you know, I was making videos about that, making videos about the, uh, the squirts, <clears throat> and YouTube didn't like that very much. Job of the Sloot likes to take credit for getting me demonetized, but that's actually not how it works. One person can't just, you know, call up YouTube and say, hey, I don't like this guy, Vegan Cheetah. Can you demonetize his channel? Uh, he's not a social justice warrior. Uh, I mean, it just doesn't work like that. But, uh, you know, people like to take credit for uh, really big events that they had absolutely nothing to do with. I'm trying not to, like, spill any coffee on my nice white Greek shirt, Greek hoodie. So, yeah, that's, um, you know, that's basically a, um, a little reminiscence for you guys of the 2016 vegan drama era. Like I said, it was one of the biggest, you know, um, just one of the most amazing, incredible, ridiculous and uh, um, out of control times of my life. I was getting shout outs from Perez Hilton and all, you know, all these big drama channels. They were watching the vegan drama. So it sort of like for a while it had crossed over. Um, Trisha Paytas, you know, was involved a lot in the vegan drama just because she would troll the vegans. Freely the Banana Girl made tons of call out videos on her. So it, it was a really, uh, really crazy time but I want to hear back from you guys what is one of the best memories you have from the vegan drama days you know a, a vegan drama channel that I didn't mention or just a particular video or a particular uh, storyline drama that went down that I didn't mention you know comment down below what you remember and uh, I hope to see you guys soon over there on 
the at behind the streams OF page. I'll leave the link in the description down below. Follow me on Instagram at I am the vegan cheetah. And as always, until next time, may the stars be aligned in your favor from Earth to infinity.